Hi, I'm Jesse Aronson, double A class of 84. I coordinate the Washington DC Cooper Alumni Group. And today I'm going to take you on a bike tour of some of the sites in our nation's capital that have a little bit of Cooper Union related content to them. We'll start here at the FDR Memorial. The FDR Memorial is not one of your big classical impressive buildings. Instead, it's arranged as a series of outdoor rooms, each of which has symbols and art that represent aspects of Roosevelt's life and presidency. So let's grab our helmets and get going. We're entering room two of the FDR Memorial, representing Roosevelt's second term. The sculptures in this room were crafted by artist George Segal, who is a Cooper Union alum. He attended Cooper Union. Here is a sculpture of a man listening to the wireless to one of Roosevelt's fireside chats. We move over and see people on a bread line awaiting food assistance. And just adjacent to that is a rural couple, no doubt worried about their economic prospects during the Great Depression. From here, we're going to move on to the World War II Memorial located on the Mall. I'm here at one of the entrances to the World War II Memorial. There's a lot of symbolism in this memorial. Certainly you can clearly see the pavilions representing the major theaters of the war, Atlantic and Pacific. Around the perimeter of this classical memorial, you can also see 54 columns representing the states and territories of the United States at the time of World War II. When they had the design competition for this memorial back in the 90s, the judging committee included Cooper alum Ed Finer, and the committee was also advised by Bill Lacey, former president of Cooper Union. There's a little hidden feature, an Easter egg, of this memorial that I'd like to show you. U.S. servicemen in Europe left behind characteristic graffiti of a little cartoon figure with a message that said Kilroy was here. So when they built the World War II Memorial, on the outside of the memorial, fittingly enough, they placed hidden Kilroy was here. You can see the Lincoln Memorial ahead of us. If you're watching this video, you probably know of the connection between Abraham Lincoln's rise to prominence in the presidency and Cooper Union. Our next stop's just a few blocks away. I'm here at the corner of H and 15th Streets, Northwest, just a few blocks from the White House. I have nothing to show you here. It's just a bunch of office buildings. But this is where the National Advisory Committee on Aeronautics, the NACA, was headquartered during World War II. When my uncle Stan Manson graduated from Cooper Union in 1941, this is where he reported to begin working on technologies that helped us win the war. For example, superchargers that helped our bombers fly higher than our enemies could go. After the war in the late 50s, NACA morphed into NASA, and my two uncles, my mother's two brothers, Stan and Cy, spent the rest of their careers working for NASA, including sending a man to the moon. They were my inspiration. They're the ones who made me want to go into engineering and to go to Cooper Union. The next part of our tour takes us into the historic Rock Creek Cemetery. This is the Adams Memorial. Henry Adams was the grandson of John Quincy Adams. His wife, Marion, unfortunately took her own life. And when she did, Henry was heartbroken and commissioned this memorial to her. It is uh, one of the saddest memorials in Washington. This figure has no inscription. It's commonly referred to as a statue of grief, 
but the full name, real name, is, I have to have the paper for this, The Mystery of the Hereafter and the Peace of God that Passeth Understanding. The sculptor of this statue, Augustus St. Gaudin, who attended Cooper Union and is also responsible for the statue of Peter Cooper at Cooper Square. The setting here, this little enclosed plaza and the marble behind the statue was designed by Stanford White, who also designed the arch in Washington Square Park. I'm ready to head out of the cemetery and get on to the final stop on this tour. Holy cow, look at that. Hey there, we're here at Washington National Cathedral. Unfortunately, we can't go inside the cathedral today. It's closed due to COVID, but I'll tell you about St. John's Chapel and show you some pictures that I took on a previous visit. St. John's Chapel, every seat has a kneeler and every kneeler has a needlepoint cushion covering honoring a famous American. Included on that list are 30-something presidents. Susan B. Anthony, who we know was given office space by Peter Cooper. And of course, Peter Cooper himself. The, uh, the cushion features Tom Thumb and his other inventions. Uh, hopefully, you're looking at an inserted picture of it right now. Anyway, that ends our tour of Washington, D.C. and its Cooper highlights. I hope you've enjoyed it. Happy Founders Day, and I look forward to seeing some of you in person, in person next year. <laughs>